Shalom and welcome to another time of Israel's Hope Bible Church Online. We're coming to you live on Facebook Live and uh, we are recording at the same time for our YouTube channel, Israel's Hope Bible Church. So we're going to continue in our studies in the book of Galatians. Uh, we're going to be in chapter 2, verses 7 through 10 today. Let's uh, take some time to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us. Father God, we do thank you today for Jesus, for eternal life. And for those looking in, we ask that you would touch them by your Holy Spirit in such a way that they would come away refreshed, challenged to live for you. And we ask that you bless the time, giving you all the glory and honor, and we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's read verses 7, 8, 9, and 10 of Galatians chapter 2. It says this, But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was unto Peter, for he that wrought effectively in Peter to the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go unto the heathen, and they unto the circumcision. Only, and this was one provisal they added, they would not they would that we should remember the poor, the same which I also was forward to do. Well, the word there, forward to do, is uh, today could be understood in a way that uh, someone is forward, they're, they're not very polite. But the word really means eager here. So you see, here's another example, the, the King James Bible. It's, it's an, an older translation, we know, and the, the language is older. But if you sit with a dictionary, you will have a better understanding of some of these things. So it is still a, a reputable and good translation to use today. I'm not saying it's the only translation. I'm saying it's a good translation to use. Now the title of this message is Called and Sent. Last time the mes message title was <coughs> excuse me, Exposing Frauds. Paul made clear last time that the message of the Judaizers was fraudulent. And this continues even today, where we still are dealing with this today. Paul's call to bring the gospel to the Gentile people was real. The Judaizers, though, were only interested in destroying Paul's ministry for the sake of their own, to advance their own experience, their own reputation. Today, we see that approval comes from the Lord, and they are called and they are sent. Now let's look at verses 7 and 8 together. We'll read it again just so we can refresh ourselves. But contrarywise, when they saw that the gospel of the uncircumcision was committed unto me, as the gospel of the circumcision was committed unto Peter, for he that wrought effectively to Peter the apostleship of the circumcision, the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Who is the same? Well, the same here is God. It's God who called. And he was mighty in Peter. In other words, he was mighty in Peter towards the Gentiles. And so, uh, excuse me, Paul to the Gentiles. So it, it was very clear to the leadership in the church in, in Jerusalem that they saw that what Paul had done in the, amongst the, un, uh, the uncircumcised, as the old English would say. This is contrary to, and that's how verse 7 starts, but there's that, that little uh, conjunction there, and it's joining the previous thoughts to this time. This, uh, this time. The frauds have been exposed, but now we see, and we see is what they're saying, the, those who are somewhat, we'll get to that also in a moment, they see that the call of Paul and, and Barnabas, of course, because he's mentioned afterwards, is committed to them. In other words, it's been given to them, and it's coming from God. It's not coming from, from men. So the gospel to the Gentiles is committed to Paul. The gospel to the circumcision, that's just an old way of saying, to the Jewish people, is committed to Peter. Now note verse 8 is in brackets. Um, it's a, a sentence structure here in verse 8 to clarify that not just what verse 7 is saying, uh, is clarifying what verse 7 is saying, but it's to all that the Judaizers accuse Paul of being. He was not called of God. He was not an apostle. So the verse 8 is this little add-in here. It's, it, it's not that it's added in. It, it's what Paul wrote, but he puts it in brackets to make a point. They saw that what was wrought effectively in Peter. Now, 
wrought effectively. That, that's old English. It means what was working effectively in Peter. The, the evidence was Peter's witness to the Jewish people in Jerusalem, particularly the Sanhedrin, for example. He had been jailed in Acts chapter 5, and he, committed, he presented the gospel to them very clear. You can read what Gamaliel said there when he heard it. He said to the, the others when they put him, Peter, outside, and they said, uh, go sit outside. We're going to talk about this. And Gamaliel said, you remember this one and that one? And he led this, uh, this rebellion here, and he went and did that over there. And all the rest that you could think of, and he said, and where are they today? They've come to nothing. But he went on to say, if this be of God, you will not be able to stop it. And so this was seen of the church in Jerusalem. It was effectively working through Peter. The apostleship to the circumcision, his call to the, to the Jewish people. And the same was mighty in me towards the Gentiles. Now this is a great verse here to make the point, the following point, that the gospel and the mission organizations that present the gospel, that one of, uh, one of the many nations is the circumcision. The Jewish people, they're considered here as part of it. And then also the heathen, all the other nations. It's not that Israel or the Jewish people are being singled out for special attention or anything, but it's a picture here very clearly that the gospel is to go to the Jewish people and the gospel is to go to the Gentile people. It's real. It's there. Anyone who says to you today, God's done with the Jewish people, well, they should read this verse because it makes it very clear that God's not done with the Jewish people and he's got a future for them and that he still has people going to them even today. Our call in ministry is primarily to bring the gospel to Jewish people, not entirely and only the Jewish people, any who come our way. I, I spent part of today dealing with an issue with a, um, a believer, a Gentile believer, dealing with a particular issue he's struggling with, and it's part of my ministry call to teach within the church, as I'm doing here right now with you, teaching within the church, the call of ministry to both Jewish and Gentile people to hear the gospel. So when all of this took place, the very ones at Peter that Paul refers to back in verse 6, back up to verse 6 with me for a moment, but of those who seem to be somewhat, remember we referred to that last time, uh, some, some people of uh, ex, uh, recognized importance will say it like that. Whoever they were, it makes no matter to me. God accepts no man's person. For they who seem to be somewhat in conference added nothing to me. Remember how we explained that? That he went <coughs> excuse me, and presented uh, his, his experience, his, the, the events that happened on his mission, missionary journey. And what did they say? He says, look, they didn't add anything to it. They saw what was real, what was happening. And so they, they were in agreement with it. And so now those ones of somewhat he names here, in verse 9, look who he says. James, Cephas, and John. Cephas is just one of the other names for Peter, who seem to be pillars. In other words, leaders, uh, recognized leadership, perceived the grace that was given to me, and they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision. The gospel. As wrote, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, to the Jewish person first and also to the Gentile. And so he goes on here, these somewhat ones who saw nothing wrong about Paul's ministry call, James, Cephas, Peter, and John, are now called pillars, and they saw and perceived the grace given to Paul to take the gospel to the Gentiles. It's a significant action here that takes place. The right hand of fellowship is referred to here. And in this time in cultural history, and it does continue today, we shake hands with our, our right hand. Um, it, in recent years, though, uh, we haven't done any handshaking because of COVID-19. So, uh, COVID-19, excuse me. But that's just a quick aside. The thing is that the giving of the right hand of fellowship, in, to use a colloquialism of this time, is it sealed the deal. The right hand was a sign of agreement and trust. Donald Campbell wrote this in his comments on this section of Galatians. It was a sign of agreement and trust. It was a sign that all present endorsed the division of labor. There was only one request, 
And that's what we find in verse 10. Only that they, only they would, that we would remember the poor, the same which I also was forward. And the word here, forward, doesn't mean that they were uh, being rude or anything. They were eager. They were eager, eager to do, to remember the poor. So, remember the poor. And there was an important reason for it. Later, there will be a famine that will be spoken of. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 to 3, Paul mentions about taking a collection for the saints in Jerusalem. Many of the Jewish believers in Jerusalem at that time, and it even continues today worldwide, wherever you find Jewish people who come to Jesus as Savior, that they become outcasts within their own family, within the community, the Jewish community. They are considered to be outside. Nobody wants them in there. I can speak to that from experience. The commitment I made to follow the Lord Jesus more than 45 years ago has not been easy. It has met, it has met with um, rejection, uh, ridicule, being put out, doors slammed in faces, all kinds of horrific kinds of things. But God remains in charge, and that's the important thing. One request. Some of these people is what is being referred to here. They were missing and uh, in their families, were, were uh, out of their families, and some of them were in destitute situations. And this continues today. And this is why we need to have a sense of compassion for any all and all new believers. Listen, I have heard the same thing from, from people coming out of Roman Catholicism. They are just shunned out of, their, out of the church and out of the community. So they have lived this out. In their ministry life and you read that in 1st Corinthians 16 1 to 3 so Paul and Barnabas are called and sent is what the title of this message was the stage now though is being set for another issue that will be discussed next time and that picks up in right away in verse 11 so we hope that in some way we've been an encouragement to you here today we're Israel's Hope Ministries my name is Ron Grossman. We're a faith ministry that trusts God to meet our needs on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. And God moves his people to do that. If you feel led of the Lord to give a gift to the work of Israel's Hope Ministries, we would deeply appreciate it at this time. Um, there, is an, there are needs at this time uh, going into the summer. You can go to our webpage, www.ihopecanada.org, and there you can give a gift through PayPal. Just hit the support us icon bottom right of the page. Uh, you can give a gift through PayPal or you can give a gift uh, by e-transfer. If you have a Canadian bank account, direct transfer one Canadian account to the other. It's, you'll find the instructions there on our page. Hit the support us icon bottom right of the page. Or you can find our, our um, address there and you can uh, send a check in the mail. So Israel's Hope Ministries exists to do that. We, we share the gospel and we teach the word of God. And we do appreciate those of you who look in today, have looked in today. Again, our webpage address, www.ihopecanada.org. This is for June 1st, 2022. And we do hope that uh, we can um, be of, uh, of assistance to you. Be in touch if, if you uh, can, uh, need to. Uh, let's stop and pray and ask the Holy Spirit to direct us again. Father God, we thank you for everyone who has looked in today. Use this time to glorify and honor you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, until next time, we say, Shalom. <laughs>